Hello, Comic-Con. This, this is literally our favorite thing to do every year at Legendary. We mark this moment where we get to come and uh, show you our wares, and hopefully you're as excited about it after we show it to you as we are. Uh, we've got some exciting things, including we're going to hand out some cards and take a poll and see how many times you think Guillermo del Toro will use the F word. I also wanted to thank uh, those, everybody down here at Comic-Con. We had, a little, had the privilege of making a little dinosaur movie this year called Jurassic World with Universal. And it was uh, everybody from Jeff Schell, Donna Langley, everybody at Universal. It was an absolute privilege to do. And in all seriousness, got to uh, fulfill a lifelong dream of making a movie with Steven Spielberg. So, in any case, um, thank you for coming. And I'm going to hand the mic over to your host, Chris Hardwick. Chris is the best! It's me again. Hey, guys. Um, um, stop it. What? Is there something behind me? In my feet. What? Oh, for, I'm supposed to turn this around. Hi, Chris Hardwick. I love you. Love Aisha Tyler. Hashtag hugs. Aww. So sweet. I didn't know what you were screaming at. I was like, there's something behind me because no, one, no one's this excited about me. Uh, I love you. I will love you later. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's just get into this, you guys, because there's a lot. We have an hour. We're going to show you some amazing stuff, taking on some great, uh, show you three different uh, movies that st people haven't seen anything before. And I am so honored and delighted that this man knows my name, and uh, he's going to be uh, one of the guests on our podcast tonight. Please welcome Guillermo del Toro! I would like to, uh, as, as Guillermo's taking seat, I want, to, I want you to know people are passing out tickets. Uh, this is part of a giveaway. We're doing a Google VR giveaway so that uh, you can check out, uh, you're gonna get 50,000 of these are being distributed. And then there's very specific experiences from Warcraft, Crimson Peak, and Pac Rim uh, when you go over to the legendary booth. So can, can, you can redeem those. Can, can I ask a favor? When Tom Hiddleston comes out, ignore him. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Don't make, don't applaud nothing. It's impossible. Nothing, do he's, nothing. He's hypnotic. <laughs> so, tell, let's, let's just really quickly talk before we show some footage, uh, a little bit about Crimson Peak and why you wanted to make it and why you thought it was important to, to tell. Well, I, I wanted to create a, a really classical, lush, uh, lavish, gothic romance. You know, it hasn't been done in a while, and it's, they're always female-centric movies that have very strong protagonists. I have two daughters that are incredibly strong, <laughs> and, and my wife is my high school sweetheart, who's incredibly strong. <laughs> and, uh, and I really think that uh, many times in some of these movies, the girl ends up being a damsel in distress, and I wanted to create a tale that was a classical gothic romance. Don't expect a reinvention when at the end turns out that the house was a spaceship and it was an experiment about nothing. Or it's all a studio and they're shooting a TV show, nothing. It's a straight gothic romance, but uh, where certain twists are a little more gender liberating, shall we say. And they are, they are, they are a little more about being yourself and stuff like that, but that, that we stop I'm, I'm incredibly conscious about this with two daughters. We are, we live in a world that is a, there is a secret gender war and we, we have to, as a storyteller, it's our duty to take these great genres and great forms and retell them a little in that conscious way. Excellent. That said, I want it to be scary. <laughs> and, and notice I don't use that word that Thomas said. <laughs> See, I, what I have you huge control, about? I have huge control. I, I, I wanted it to be scary, and I wanted it to be gorgeous. And I think it's a movie, it's one of my three favorite movies I've done, and this, in my opinion, you don't have to agree, is the most beautiful movie I have made. Está de poca madre! 
So uh, let's, why don't we show a clip from this, and then uh, we'll have a little announcement about something from the trailer after you guys see it. Let's do that, and, and let me warn you, for those that don't like spoilers, there are spoilers, but the... Damn. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. Alright, we'll meet the cast of Crimson, Crimson Peak. I think you're gonna be very excited to see uh, Mia Wazikowska, Tom Hiddleston, Jessica Chastain! The long walk, all the way across. Oh, there it is. Welcome. Jeez. <laughs> Thank you very much. That is his life. I love you. My God. I, I always say that if they found him grinding poppies in an alley, they will go, oh, poppies. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> We do, we do, man. So, and you guys, this is the first peek that you've seen uh, at the trailer. Do you want to make an announcement about the Allerdale Hall? Well, we are, we are uh, creating uh, an experience uh, at Halloween Horror Nights at Universal. So, all of you that live in California or partake, I'll see you there. It's going to be terrifying and cool. Excellent. Mia, let's start with you. Uh, what can you tell us about your character and what was what was the experience like being on set? I mean, it's everything. It, 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 the, the environment was so immersive. Yeah, I've never been on a set like this before. It was the most beautifully created mansion, and um, the detail is just so incredible. And um, yeah, I've never been on a set like that before. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, backstage, um, I was talking to Tom about what we were going to talk about here, and he goes, "I want to just throw it to the fans. I would rather just have the fans ask questions uh, because everything he says makes your heart melt." Oh. So uh, we're going to open up the floor to fan questions right now, and you guys can ask the panel whatever it is that you want to know. He has a great accent. He does everything about him. Yes. Hi. What? Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. What's your name? Uh, Angel. And what's your question? Uh, my question is. I know they build the size set, so I want to know which part of the set do you guys like most? Ooh, that's what, did you say which part of the set do you guys like most? Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. That's okay, just lean closer to the microphone, we can't, we can't really hear you. Like which part of the set do you guys like? Which part on set do you guys like most? Like what's your favorite part of it? Is it the acting or is it the, what do you love? Uh, the physical set, you mean? Yeah, the yeah. castle. Yeah. I, I, I personally, I, the great hall, it, it, I found just jaw dropping. Because um, you have to understand, this, they, this is a, the house that the sharks live in is in Cumberland in the north of England, and the house was built on a soundstage in Toronto. And when I walked in for the first time, it, it was just breathtaking because uh, it was on three or four stories with a working elevator and. And um, if you actually trod on the floorboards, the clay which is underneath the house would seep across the floor. It was the most extraordinary place, the most extraordinary set I have ever seen. Um, and I was actually very sad when they had to tear it down. That's what they're doing. It is very sad. I like the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, it sounds horrible, but the bathroom is gorgeous. Yeah, that's very important. Just it's not for the reasons you think. <laughs> I feel like some of the reasons we think. Well, yes, yeah, okay. that too. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I mean, maybe it's a bit possessive, but I really liked Lucille's bedroom. And um, the, every corner of that room was filled with something that, uh, I can't really explain it because it's all spoilers, but it was so, so beautiful and um, it's photographed beautifully. Mia, what was your favorite part about making the Crimson Peak? Um, probably just, um, you know, being able to work with Guillermo and, and the cast who was so fantastic and um, I was new to the genre and to the concept of horror or, um, and I found Guillermo um, gave me a copy of Frankenstein and there was an introduction to the book that he wrote and it was like sort of an education in in um, you know why it's an important thing and how we learn about ourselves through our fears and um, so it was kind of amazing to have Guillermo as a guide in this new world and it's really cool. Excellent. Let's. Uh, what is your name? Um, my name is Katie. 
And what's your question? Um, my question is for Tom. Um, I want to know uh, from from your perspective, um, how is Mr. Del Toro different from the other directors you've worked with? I mean, what's unique about him? Well, the first thing to say um, is. Uh, that we all got given these extraordinary character biographies uh, when we received the script. And it was a 10-page uh, life story, maybe even it was 15, I can't remember, but it was the most incredible document um, with my star sign and my date of birth and the secrets that I don't want to tell anyone and what I like and what I don't like and a horrible time I had with my aunt when I was 13 in Whitehaven and, and, and um, that kind of detail is what we should all do with every character we play. Um, and I just had the best time with Guillermo. We ha Guillermo has an enormous imagination and getting to live inside that imagination with all of his detail and, and rigor and precision was a huge pleasure. Uh, and I've never been teased so much on set by another director, but I liked it. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're like twins. Yeah. We're like twins. <laughs> like the Mentally. Danny DeVito film, right? <laughs> you mean like the movie Twins? With, yeah. The, with yeah. The, yeah. I'm Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make me Arnold, I guess? Yes. Yeah. Hi. Hi. What's your name? I'm Darcy. And what's your question, Darcy? Okay, so this is for Guillermo and it's for Tom. Um, ever since I saw this one interview, I was really curious. What was the difference between the original version of Thomas Sharp and the one that was rewritten after Benedict dropped from the cast? Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing you do is when you write a screenplay and, and you have a first, second, third draft, whenever you go out with the screenplay, then what I do is I then uh, work with the actors. I generate these biographies that are about 10 pages, give it to them, and then we sit down and do what is called table work. And what we do is we discuss the biography with the pages, what they like, what they don't like, and uh, we go through a beautiful, fun discovery process. We say, oh, I would do this because of that, and I would not do this because of that. And you kind of uh, then come out of those meetings supercharged, you go back and input all that visually or audiovisually into the set design, into the way you're designing the sound, or in pieces of dialogue and staging. And But ultimately, all of it is fed into it. The movie, as, as uh, Jessica was saying, Lucille's Bedroom, for example, came out entirely of these discussions, and every single piece in there tells you a little bit about her. I, I, I say that I write the movies on paper, but really they get written on film. And, and if you pay attention in my movies, if you are watching every detail, every detail should add up to that. So it changes a lot. So Thomas Sharp uh, was, uh, and every other part, was tailored to the actor doing it. Now it's Tom's turn. Excellent, and then just sort of branching over to Jessica, what were some things that you took away, or what were some things that you liked about your character that you can share? I like a lot about my character. I, I love her, she actually absolutely breaks my heart. Uh, what I love about her is that she's fiercely loyal, and, um, and she acts out of love to receive love, and her way to give and receive love. Um, it, most of that came from working with Guillermo and, and reading the biography he sent me and we'd be on set together working on a scene and the biography, the secrets of who Lucille was would inform the decisions made in the scene and sometimes new scenes would pop up, um, Lucille's bedroom would pop up. Uh, we had a great rehearsal with Tom in um, London, and we read our bi biographies for each other, but I did ask, I said, please don't read anything that you wouldn't want your sister to know. <laughs> oh, that's great. So I made sure that I kept my secrets and we all kept theirs. Yeah, we don't share the biographies. Uh, the actors don't share them, so they can keep secrets from each other, you know? And, and that, that is actually a fun game. It's also, it's interesting, the film is so much about secrets. Um, and I think, you know, all of us in our lives, we all try and live in the present, we live in the here and now, but we are, we are formed by the past and the things we did, the things that were done to us, and every character in this film is, is so, is, is almost 
is either weighed down or liberated by what's happened in the past. And the house itself is the past. Is the past. And, and witness to what happened in that house, it saw everything, it heard everything. And I think, I think uh, the, 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 the exciting tension in the film is that it's, um, every character is struggling to create their own destiny. Um, I think that's fun. Excellent, we have time for one more question. I think that's you. Yes, um, I'm Don Anna. <laughs> Uh, first, I wanted to thank Jessica and Mia for portraying such strong, multifaceted characters. And I wanted to thank Tom and Guillermo for just supporting them and giving them that spotlight. But the question, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, over the course of filming the movie, what was the most creatively or emotionally challenging part of that for you? Uh, the last act of the film is uh, an emotional roller coaster. Uh, it's, it, it exists at a very intense pitch, and we all had to kind of hold hands and, and battle through it because it's it's uh, it can you know it can take it out of you some days, but I love living, I mean, I think most actors become actors because they're fascinated by extremity. They're fascinated by what happens when people are tested by physical, psychological, or emotional challenges they have to overcome. And I personally find the last 45 minutes of this film is headlong and thrilling. And there's twist after twist, and you don't know where it's gonna go, and, um, you know, it, had, it was a very satisfying challenge to overcome. Excellent. So before we let you guys go, Guillermo, do you have one thing that you want to say to people about this movie that you want them to take away from Hall H to go see it when it comes out in October of this year? I think this is the first time that I, I, I felt uh, really empowered by the support of Legendary and Universal to, to uh, with Mimic, I decided in 97, I said, I'm going to do my more young uh, movies in America, you know, things that I loved as a kid and stuff like that, but I'm gonna keep my more adult and hardcore stuff for my European or Spanish language films. And this is the first time that I ventured into this. Um, early on, we decided it needed to be art, it needed to be complex, and I secretly was hoping, I hope the other shoe never drops. I hope we never have to cross that bridge where they say, uh, well, yes, we remember we said it could be R, but this is too much, or this is uh, blah, 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 and it never happened. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy to say that I felt, for the first time, completely free to make uh, an adult movie in the English language, and I hope you guys enjoy the hell out of it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I would say, hell yeah. <laughs> Go All right, it, please. October 16, 2015, Guillermo del Toro, Mia Wazakowska, Tom Hedelson, Jessica Chastain, Crimson Peak. <laughs> Excellent. There they go. And people are rushing out, cards are being loaded. Like, if anyone should be allowed to say the F word in Hall H, it should be Guillermo. We should just change this to Hall F, and then he could just... <laughs> I love you all too. Oh. Uh, just so you know, you're all pregnant now. Uh, that's how that works. Enjoy your babies. Enjoy your little babies. <laughs> Finally, ah, I'm waiting to get pregnant by that guy forever.